Hello, this is The Pride and me, Alertina Majarova. The Pride keeps on telling you about our successful compatriots who glorify our country beyond its borders. And today we are getting to know one of the most talented cellists, laureate of numerous competitions, and just a very bright person, Sandy Tokanova. Sandy Tokanova, born in Almaty, Republic of Kazakhstan. At the age of 13, she gave her first recital. At the age of 15, she first performed as a soloist with the State Academic Symphony Orchestra of the Republic of Kazakhstan. A graduate of the Kulash by Seat of a Republican Secondary Specialized Music Boarding School for Gifted Children, instructor Yevgeny Lutsenko, winner of international and national competitions. In 2000, at the invitation of Maestro Tibor Varga, she moved to Switzerland, where she continued her studies at the Zion Music Academy and performed as a solo cellist of the Zion Chamber Orchestra while completing her studies at the Kurmangazi Kazakh National Conservatory. In 2008, Sandy trained at the Department of Opera and Symphony Conducting at the Lausanne Conservatory, and in the same year, she won the Kolar Prize of the Kiefer Hablitzel Competition, Bern, Switzerland, as a promising young conductor. Since 2011, for several years, she was on the organizing committee of the prestigious Verbier Festival in Switzerland as an artistic assistant to the executive director and coordinator of the summer music camp. In 2017, as a guest artistic director of classical concerts in the Energy Hall of Expo 2017, Sandy and her colleagues successfully conducted a series of concerts unprecedented for the cultural life of Kazakhstan with the participation of classical and jazz music celebrities. Currently, Sandy is actively involved in various projects, gives concerts both as a soloist and as a member of chamber ensembles and orchestra groups. From the spring of 2020, a charity festival of chamber music will be held in Zurich every month, with Sandy Tokanova as the artistic director. It is not uncommon for active people who consider themselves global citizens. Sandy Tokanova is always on the move. Can you imagine the tightness of schedule of such a famous musician? I couldn't do it. Nevertheless, everything turned out well, and now, a year later, we're again in Zurich. The meeting was scheduled early in the morning, in the heart of the city, at the church. After all, where else to play Bach if not in a church? Old city. This area is called Niedeldorf, which means the lower village. So once it was a village, Dorf, and there is Oberdorf. In general, we are now approximately at the border of Niedeldorf and Oberdorf. I live in Niederdorf. Perhaps the atmosphere of such cities contributes to inspiration, some special mood? Yes, you're right, everything is simply saturated with history. Sandy Tokanova is perhaps a true perfectionist and an excellent student. She approaches each task comprehensively, prepares carefully. The same thing with the shooting. She thought through everything to the smallest detail, and perhaps let her tell a little about herself. I think that I am a lucky person. Firstly, I was lucky to be born in a beautiful family. I have a wonderful mother, Galia Aubakirovna Tokanova. A kind-hearted person who, I think, will not leave anyone indifferent. She worked as a dentist all her life, and now she is retired. And my father is Akim Tarazi, a famous playwright in Kazakhstan. And as I sometimes joke, like father, like daughter. Since childhood, I myself, as far as I remember, used to write poems, compose songs. I did it all the time, and I think I took it after my father. Sandy lives here, in the historical center of the Swiss capital. 
Yes, it's just in the center and near the central station. I often use the train. I have a permanent ticket for public transport in Switzerland and it's more convenient for me not to drive because it's never possible to find a park in, in Zurich. By the way, train trips in Switzerland are indeed one of the most used means of transportation. In addition, it is quite common to live in one city and work or study in another. Moreover, the trains run strictly according to the schedule. Swiss precision is not worldwide famous for nothing. Being late for at least one minute is a real stress for local residents. That is, the life of a musician is always associated with travel, right? Yes, I generally live in a train. If they ask me where you live, I answer on the railroad. I used to have a personal office. There was a table where I sat down hoping to write something. Looking ahead, I'll say that today we'll visit not only the Zurich Conservatory, but also go to the Alps, to our friends Alma Mater. And local high-speed trains will help us better see Switzerland because this country, although not large, is very different. So much so that even residents in different areas speak different languages. Sandy is very actively in touch with her homeland and countrymen. By the way, our current accompanist, Irina, is also from Kazakhstan. But in general, as we can see later, Sandy is a kind of a ringleader in a local party of Kazakhstanis. Together, they celebrate holidays, miss their homeland. You know, in many cities, Kazakhs celebrate Nauris together, make Beshparmak. Yes, we do that. We annually celebrate Nauris. We rent a room here on Lake Zurich. It is very similar in style to Kazakhstan. There are such patterns. Ornament similar to Kazakh national decorations. It makes me feel like home. Our countrymen quite often perform within the walls of the Zurich Conservatory, and even for us, it isn't the first time here, is it? Unbelievably beautiful building. For Sandy, her parents are the most important people in life. The foundations laid in childhood gave amazing shoots. But there is no childhood without naughtiness. For example, childhood friend Alan Buribayev, now one of the most successful conductors, according to Sandy's stories, when in the evenings they stayed up late or prepared funny performances for home folks, only his words could make the girl's mother let her stay longer. Were your parents strict? I just remembered your story about your mother, that you had a curfew and so on. No, I just easily get carried away. Mom knows this very well. She often came down on me for being too keen on something, forgetting about everything else, not coming somewhere, being late. This is so me, you know. Sandy considers Yevgeny Nikolaevich Lutsenko as her second father in the art world, who helped her develop her musical abilities. The teacher taught her not only playing the cello, but also everything that could be useful in life. The holder of a beautiful tenor, during classes, he could convey any musical phrase through his voice, thanks to which his lessons were unique. It turned out that in Zurich, musicians from all over the world have their own patron. Now we're having another acquaintance, which I am very proud of. Yes, we are going to a terrific person now. That is, I now consider him one of a kind. I say that to him, such as you are now a rarity because this person is a philanthropist who still honors the old traditions when rich people, patrons of art, those who could afford, they arranged home concerts, am I right? In German, this is called house concert. This man still organizes such home concerts in our time in Zurich. Moreover, musical celebrities come to his events. It was called musical salon. Yes, musical salon. The best musicians of the world, Europe, come to his house concerts. Moreover, he has his own social circle, that is, the local audience from Zurich. Mainly these are aged people, local aristocrats and the bourgeois. 
They constantly go to his concerts. Firstly, it's amazing that concerts take place almost every day. That is, very often, several times a week. Richard Arninger is a kind of a legend in the circles of European Swiss musicians. This man turned his family estate into a rehearsal concert base for musicians. However, let's start with the beginning. I think he's already waiting. His last name is Erniger, but his name is Richard. That is, it is most likely his father or mother. He said, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes, yes, no problem. We are waiting. We change languages of communication all the time because when I first met him, I still lived in the French part of the country. We started to speak French. I always try to switch to German with him, but he often forgets what language we speak. In the end, we speak English. In my opinion, this is common to all multicultural people. Today, home concert at 7 a.m. The door opens at 6.30. Such a simple tablet. Richard is a retiree and his mission is to help musicians. Here they can stop, here they can rehearse. Ricky, as he is commonly called, has several grand pianos. And sometimes concerts that are arranged here are more magnificent than one can hear in the famous halls. Not so long ago, the owner of the house turned 80 years old and a large-scale concert was given in his honor at the Zurich Conservatory that no one could doubt that he was a universal favorite. 65 musicians played in his honor, including special birthday versions of classical works, thus expressing appreciation and gratitude for his participation in their fate. Sandy is one of those whom he once helped and they remained good friends. Well, exactly about some around seven years ago, I got a phone call from the church. Mm -hmm. from uh, the Sigrist, the man who works for the church. Uh, Mr. Irniger, I got your address. We have a big, big problem. I said, well, what happened? Oh, a musician came. Hmm? Uh, they will play next Sunday in the church. And she came on Friday evening and she said, uh, yes, the pianist will arrive soon. Where is the piano? And then they said, a piano? We don't have a piano in the church. But she said, yes, but we, we fixed a concert, piano and cello in the church. On Sunday at five, said, I'm sorry, we don't have a piano. The other day, Sergei Kudryakov came from Moscow, the great professor, man from the church. He stand in front of the church and told everybody goes now to Richard. <laughs> And uh, it's not far away, the church, huh? There was no piano of the required class in the church and a home concert at the Villa of Riha was organized in a matter of hours. There were no enough chairs for all visitors, so they accommodated as they could. Tickets were sold right at the entrance, but the celebration turned out to be just magnificent. Now, when Sandy comes to visit, her Erniger always puts on her gift an embroidered Kazakh chapan. It's only problem that this hat is a little bit big or my head is too small. There'll be a concert here tonight too, this time jazz, and the owner haven't arranged his chairs and moving the piano. He doesn't trust these manipulations to anyone. Goes shopping for a buffet table. He also cooks for his guests. And we go further. We are waiting for a meeting with fellow countrymen living in Zurich. That is, everyone who comes to Zurich generally to Switzerland can count on your country's support, right? Of course, we even perform ceremonies for each other's children. Cut the hobbles to Salkesu. We have a lot of little kids. We celebrate 40 days too. In fact, among you, I feel like in a big family. Incredible. Yes, that's what I wanted to say about it's thanks to our compatriots here. For example, I've been living here for a long time, for almost 20 years, and it's so nice that in recent years I have found a piece of the motherland here. When Sandy called, almost everyone found time in their business schedule to see each other and meet us. There are bank employees, diplomats, businessmen, and musicians. Everyone has a different occupation, and love for the motherland unites all of them. So do you even cook national dishes? 
Yes, sure. We cook everything. Monty, Beshparmak, Pilaf, Caspe. Our Janela is such a handy woman. She cooks barsaks, bilash, samsa. We have one friend. She knows how to make kazi. She made it from local horse meat? Yes, local horse meat. It was great, yeah. During such heartfelt conversations in a friendly atmosphere, sometimes you forget that you are not at home, but in a faraway Switzerland. And early in the morning, we went to the very central station, which is so familiar to Sandy. After all, this is the starting point of her journeys to rehearsals and tours. From here, we went to the Swiss Alps, the town with a soothing name, Zion. The Swiss life of the young cellist began right there. The town of Thun and the very beginning of Lake Thun always makes me think about Brahms' cello sonata. Because every musician, and especially cellists, they know the history of the sonata. And when you drive through this place, especially in the weather, like today, or even when it's, you understand that in the same weather, Brahms wrote his work. But in what weather do you like to play music? Probably in the train, certainly not in the summer heat. For musicians, especially for cellists, violinists, for all those who need to make active physical movements, this is just a nightmare. Of course, it's not good for instruments, too. Everyone, of course, is looking for a way out of the situation. We often joke about it, but you should always practice in any weather. In the summer, you can go to some basement. Lock up and try to play there. Humidity is harmful to instruments, right? Yes, these are undesirable conditions as well as direct sunlight. When traveling in Switzerland, you can talk or just look at the landscapes. No matter how much I live and travel here, I never get tired of the beauty of these landscapes. I never cease to be amazed. I used to think that I would get used to it over time. Not, it turns out, that it's impossible. Such an amazing country. It reminds me very much of Kazakhstan. Yes, mountain landscapes are very similar. Probably I would not be able to live that long in another country. When I see mountains, I feel like home. Sure, yeah. Almaty citizens would understand. Almaty residents will understand, will pronounce this phrase more than once today. The person who misses the homeland starts to look for similarities. This fountain is like a dandelion. Yes, I remember when I moved to live in that gray house, Sion was practically peopleless. It is now that we see a lot of people here, and 20 years ago it was rarely possible to meet a person on the street. And I usually walked here alone. When I see this fountain, there are so many memories at once. Almata. I was born and raised in Almaty. The administrative building of the city of Sion. There is a small park in front of the house. I used to rent an apartment in this house. Isn't it just the same? Yes, same with our dandelion fountain. Sion is a specialist city for Sandy Tukanova. Firstly, here she studied and grew up as a professional musician. Another reason is that the French part of Switzerland is close in spirit to Sandy. Indeed, in this seemingly small country, language, mentality, social norms differ in different cantons. According to her, Sandy loves the French language more and enjoys the opportunity to speak it. And also, in the mountains, of course, as always, she recalls her beloved Almata. Let's 
But when a person is yearning, there is always a reason for nostalgia. There will always be something that recalls the homeland. Especially when you live in the mountains, you always remember Almaty. You plan to travel home more often? Maybe hold concerts there? Yes, of course, I would really like to. I am just a very shy person. And in our country, you have to remind of yourself. I firmly decided to go to study in Europe. Through leaving for a study in Switzerland almost 20 years ago, I would never have believed that I'll stay here for so long. After all, I planned to get an education and return to my homeland. I never thought that I would not live in Kazakhstan. And even now, many of my friends still notice that, how come? This is some kind of paradox. You are such a patriot. And this is true. I am truly a patriot, in a good sense of the word. I love the motherland. I'm a part of Kazakh people. And from time to time, I am overflowed with pride for our country. this way? Yes, but if you go out into the city, then you need to go down here and up here by this beauty through these streets on these ladders. This is amazing. Well, of course, you can only get on foot. Yes, yes, we will go on foot. This tree, we used to sit under it. We talked with my classmates. These courtyards, small theater, small, here is the house where I lived, that is, here you see the church and there is a such a passage you're about to see it. And this house, yes, the windows from the kitchen overlooked the airport and my windows overlooked the castle garden. Incredible. There is a hill and a castle ahead, and here is also a castle, and now it houses the museum. Is it right above us? Museum of Fine Arts. You can see it from here. Can we go through the wooden passage? This is a church. I was the keeper of the key to the church because our orchestra rehearsed here. It has good acoustics, but very little space. For example, the big orchestra will not be able to rehearse here. The same half a minute from home to the academy and from academy to home. This creaking gate. Of course, I always want to return to Almaty. Almaty is the number one city. Love for life. And then, probably, Sion. Sandy came to Sion due to the fact that she was selected among the students of the legendary genius, the master Tibor Varga. The master Varga, as everyone called him, was famous for his rigor, but he also patronized his students. He selected Sandy after listening when the audition was already closed. The master liked the game of the young girl and she got a place in the string academy created by Varga, as well as a scholarship. Indeed, for the girl's parents, was an impossible task to pay for life and study in one of the most expensive countries in Europe. Perhaps this place causes the fastest chest beating, so much important is connected with it, including strong student friendship. I don't know how much we have not seen each other a year or two, but six months for sure, a year probably. This is our house. Long time no see. <laughs> what a meeting! Beauty. Yes, so many memories at once. Sion is just a place of attraction for us, and we all always want to come back here. The city is like honey, and we are like bees, all the time flying here. How many years have we lived here? Here on these very stairs, we used to sit for so many years in a row. I remember it precisely. I'm sitting and listening carefully. Suddenly, there is a sound. Varga's car, its motor. But it was generally something for us. Such an unusual person. It's even hard for me to find words to describe this extraordinary personality. 
He means a lot to us, and we were just so lucky. Yes, I tell the same thing. This is a great story of luck. Yes, yesterday's students went their separate ways. One stayed at the academy as a teacher, the other left. But the friendship remained, and it's very touching. Here is our picture, and here we are. Do you remember? Here's Master Varga in the middle, stands next to Miriam, his beloved student. Here she is, Miriam. She's now a famous violinist. This is me wearing my shirt. Do you remember? On these very stairs, yes, these stairs at the entrance. I must say that approximately 90% of students found very good places in the best orchestras in the world. For example, Iko plays in the Chicago Symphony. Yuko in Germany. I could listen to these stories endlessly. Moreover, even in such a seemingly serious area as classical music, there is always place for pranks and cheerful antiques. There is a funny story. When we decided to listen to Sting, there was a turntable, big speakers, and I took Sting's album. With me, there were Raquel, she's Portuguese, and Lana from Canada. And so, it's night, it's dark, probably midnight, and we understand that no one is watching us now. We are our own bosses now. We can practice all night. That is, we can stay here. I'm sitting at the piano playing along with Sting. I'm trying to pick up the notes. The door opens. Indeed, 12 a.m. Maestro Varga is at the door. <laughs> and he's shocked. What are you all doing here? And most importantly, for a long time, we could not figure out how to turn off this turntable. And the Maestro was in full confidence that we were sitting here all night and playing our instruments, that we were rehearsing. And here we are listening to Sting, disco time. It was such a shock. I remember, and we were all speechless, especially Raquel. She was always talkative. <laughs> and he, too, was speechless. And then he said, What are you doing here? We were so ashamed, as if we were guilty children, but it was what it was. Bravo! Oh, just imagine. It was Metr Varga who became the founder of the Verbier Festival. It is unique in its scale event in the world of classical music. Not every musician can become a participant or at least visit this festival. Our Sandy is associated with this festival as a producer. What is the uniqueness of this festival in its unusual atmosphere, the stars of music, a small village, you walk the streets and meet everyone here, in a cafe, in a restaurant, on the street, you can always ask for an autograph. All your idols are here by your side and you can talk to them, everything is so simple there. That is, in my opinion, nowhere else in the world is there anything like this, because usually everything goes in a completely different way. It is not surprising that Sandy Takanova strove to apply similar experience in Kazakhstan, creating something similar on our sites, and fate gave her such an opportunity. I just did not imagine that someday my dream could come true in such a wonderful way. But thanks to Expo, it has become possible. I was very glad that my knowledge, skills and my organizational talent were useful and I managed to invite many musicians to Astana at the Expo and organize the classical part of the Expo cultural program. I invited my friends whom I met here in Verbier, Zurich, the best musicians from all over the world and our audience could enjoy their art. It is hoped that we will see and hear Sandy Tukhanova more often in our native land, because meetings with Kazakhstanis always brings joy, and meetings with people like her are also a reason for pride.
We thank Sandy for the wonderful meeting and the opportunity to once again make sure that our compatriots are able to find their place under the sun in any country in the world, but at the same time, remain ours. See you.